leave of absence to deal with his problems. Wiener's constituents holding a rally today demanding his resignation. But earlier this week, there was a poll of voters in his district found more than half want Wiener to stay in Congress. But with the scandal growing, how long can he maintain support to keep his seat? David Drucker joins us. He is a staff writer with Roll Call. Uh, David, thanks very much. You know, uh, more lewd photographs that he sent to yet another woman came out today. Uh, and, and isn't that, and we can only show this one because it's the only one that's arable. I mean, the other ones I took a look at, and they're just too disgusting. Uh, and isn't that the problem for Democrats? Every day brings a new lascivious photograph, an embarrassing sexting message, or some other illicit disclosure about Wiener. Uh, and it's kind of, uh, you know, David, the daily drip, drip of salacious material. Is it beginning to take its toll on the Democratic Party as a whole? Well, I think it could be a problem, and certainly it's a distraction. But in some respects, I don't really think it's, it's the problem for the party that some, some think, simply because, number one, he's not a leader within the party. He's not really a national figure. At least he wasn't until we got to know a whole lot more of him uh, than we used to. Uh, second of all, just about every leading Democrat has called for him to resign, which takes away the questions of, are you going to ask him to resign? So they've asked for a House ethics investigation. They've asked him to get lost. And there's really not much more they can do unless the House ethics investigation uh, digs up a lot of things that could lead to expulsion. Right. Um, I think it'll be up to his constituents if he even has a seat, because I think that New York Democrats now have an easy way to get rid of him. Gerrymandering uh, they're gonna out lose, of his district. Correct, because yeah. they're going to lose two seats, and here's a guy now that's right. uh, the odd man out, if you will. He's expendable. Well, you know, now he says, I'm going to seek treatment. But, you know, I suspect that Americans have grown skeptical, if not cynical, over this uh, routine remedy of seeking treatment or rehab for every conceivable transgression. And, and often the offender, it's pretty obvious, is simply trying to rehab his image, not correct his behavior. Uh, Kirsten Powers, who, who briefly dated Wiener, uh, called him, and this is a quote, a liar, a predator, and a misogynist. Is there rehab for that? You know, I did, Greg, it's funny you bring this up, and I'm laughing because I didn't know there was rehab for being a liar. And essentially, I, this doesn't seem to me to be a physical uh, disease. It seems to be a moral disease. Um, but I think to the point, I don't think that voters or Americans buy into this whole thing that if you don't tell the truth, that's something you go to rehab for. I mean, this is something people go to rehab for alcoholism and drug addiction and, and serious uh, physical deficiencies, not, not moral deficiencies. And I think that if for some reason he did not lose his seat um, and did run for re-election, I think he would be challenged and probably beaten in a Democratic primary. I know some of these early polls show him with a considerable more support yeah. than we would have thought, but I think as people get to know about this scandal and really absorb it, I think that his support will diminish some. You know, Nancy Pelosi was not quick to call for Wiener's resignation. In fact, her, her first real statement actually came just yesterday, and it was rather tepid. We'll put it up on the screen. This is part of it. I urge Congressman Wiener to seek help without the pressures of being a member of Congress. She couldn't even bring herself to use the word resign. Can Pelosi be faulted for, for not quickly uh, moving and forcefully moving? I mean, after all, when you compare it to Republican Chris Lee, who sent out now, by comparison, a pretty tame photo of himself without a shirt. Speaker Boehner reportedly called Lee into his office and said, I want you out of here by the end of the day. And, and that's what happened. Well, you're right to point out the differences there. I think Speaker Pelosi, or I should say now Minority Leader Pelosi, has always been um, hesitant to call for a member's resignation. She tread very carefully with Charlie Rangel during his you know, very different scandal. But I think on the Republican side, too, not all have acted as quickly as Speaker Boehner did with Chris Lee. Um, whether it was Senator Vitter um, or now resigned Senator Ensign, right. uh, Republicans treaded much more carefully and didn't immediately call for their resignation. They were very careful with former Senator Larry Craig after his bathroom incident in the Minneapolis airport. And so I think both parties here um, share equal blame and, and, in a sense, equal right. credit for how they've dealt with scandals. You know, someone, um, actually several people who know Wiener pretty well, say his entire self-image, his identity is totally wrapped up in being a congressman and as a career politician, 
he actually has no other developed skills. What in the world would he do if he quit? Uh, I mean, he could wait a year, I suppose, to become a lobbyist. But, David, as you know, you have to have friends to be a lobbyist. And Wiener has always been one of the most disliked members of Congress. Might that be one of the reasons why he's refusing to quit? A guy's got nothing else to do. Well, look, no member of Congress relinquishes their seat easy. They work really hard to get it. There's a lot of ego involved for everyone, even the members of Congress that we like. Um, and, and what I would say is that I, I think uh, we all wonder, in a sense, in Washington, what our skills translate to. And I think Congressman Weiner's problem as a part of the scandal is that his whole persona is based on holding the moral high ground, in a sense, screaming at people for being wrong. And that's, that's his whole image is, I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm going to scream and tell you so. And it's, it's mm -hmm. worn well up till now for his constituents. They were very pleased with his very sort of loud, in a sense, angry liberal persona, which was much different than many other Democrats in Washington. Um, but now that he has misbehaved, if you will, it leaves him with very few friends. And I think there were a lot of people, including people who worked for him, who in a sense thought, yeah, this couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> well, maybe he's screaming at himself in the mirror because he does a lot of other stuff apparently in the mirror. David Drucker, roll call. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Great to see you. Mm -hmm.